In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a cobulation intracapsular tonsillectomy in a 21-year-old lady who has had a history of recurrent tonsillitis with two previous episodes that have resulted in hospital admissions. She was otherwise fit and well with no other past medical history of note. I use a standard setup with a Boyle Davis gag, draffin rods and a Mollison pillow retractor. I often use soft rubber catheters to hitch up the pallet to access or double check the superior aspect of the tonsillar fossae. I operate with a flexible laryngeal mask airway in almost all cases rather than an endotracheal tube. This helps with operating theatre efficiency and usually does not negatively impact on the surgical view. As is often the case in adults presenting with recurrent tonsillitis, this patient had small retracted grade 1 tonsils and it was difficult to see the tonsils without retracting the anterior pillar. My preference is to use the precise easy view wand and this automatically defaults to settings of 7 for coblation and 3 for coagulation, but I manually increase the coblation setting to 9 in adults for speedier tissue removal and to avoid blockage. When performing the intracapsular technique in adults, it is important to correctly set the saline flow through the wand to a light drip when the coblation pedal is pushed. Too little saline flow can contribute to blockage. Coblation on the tonsil results in rapid tissue removal. I use sweeping movements or a dabbing action to remove tissue across a broad front. The face of the wand is used to make gentle contact with the tonsil, but one must take care not to dissect with the wand or to push too hard with the face of the wand. In adult cases, it is usual to need to retract the anterior pillar to gain access to embedded tonsils. If bleeding is encountered, it can be managed by a short touch of the coagulation pedal while contacting the face of the wand against the bleeding vessel. Assuming the capsule is not breached, even in adult cases, intraoperative bleeding is generally quite minimal. I use repetitive motion in a stroking action whilst maintaining very gentle contact with the face and edge of the wand against the tonsil tissue to enable eradication of the tonsil crypts, while taking care not to traumatise the normal mucosa nearby. Sometimes debris can be seen as the crypts are removed and this is cleared by the suction on the device. When using this technique in adults, the goal is to identify the entire tonsil capsule and meticulously remove all tonsil tissue. Although tonsil tissue will sometimes change to a brown colour, the tonsil capsule is identified by its relative resistance to coblation and by a fibrous and reticular feel and appearance. Adult tonsils tend to be more fibrous than in children and when the capsule is reached, islands of non-viable coblated tonsil tissue are sometimes seen. However, the contour of the capsule should be visible underneath. These denatured islands of tissue can be left as they will slough off during the healing process. Good retraction is essential to ensuring all tonsil tissue is removed. The retractor can be used to lateralise the anterior pillar or as shown here, retracting the base of the tongue away from the inferior pole. In larger tonsils, the retractor can also be used to protect structures such as the posterior pharyngeal wall or uvula. As we can see at the end of the operation, the tonsil tissue has been removed all the way up to the capsule, but the normal mucosal structures have been largely preserved, which results in a speedier recovery and less discomfort than with conventional extracapsular procedures. Patients who have undergone an adult intracapsular tonsillectomy can return to a normal diet on the day of surgery and can be discharged approximately four hours postoperatively. I routinely prescribe oral paracetamol, codeine, and a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication such as ibuprofen to be taken regularly during the post-operative period. I also find that using topical analgesia such as Diflam spray can be a helpful adjunct in managing any post-operative discomfort. From my own data series, the median return to work and education with no further requirement for analgesia is around 10 days.